Hello, my name is Keshwani. That's K E S H W A N I. Keshwani. We are here because we want to prepare for SAT. We have been solving SAT math problems out of this book here, the SAT Official Study Guide 2020. If you do not own this book already, purchase one immediately. You're going to need it. Make sure you buy 2020 edition and always make sure that the book is in front of you when you're working with me. Let's turn to page number 867. 867, we'll start a new section, section number 4. If at the end of the video you find this helpful and you decide that you would like to work with me to help you get ready for the exam, you can get hold of me by sending me an email at kashwaniprep at icloud.com. Let's take a look at number 1. As you know, in the beginning of the section, they're going to be very straight, very straight, very simple, very straightforward. It says 2x squared minus 4 minus 3x squared plus 2x minus 7. You see this section has 38 problems. This, question, this section has 38 problems. 30 of them are multiple choice, 8 of them are gradients. Since there are 30 multiple choice, which means approximately not just in this section but always approximately one third in the beginning are easy the middle one third are medium the last one third one third are hard as you well know which means approximately the first ten questions are going to be quite straightforward which is what we're doing right now as you can see there's, there's nothing much here open the parentheses make sure you pay attention to the negative here so negative and negative becomes positive 3x squared negative and positive becomes negative 2x and negative and negative becomes positive 7. That's all it is, just a matter of paying attention. We have 2x squared, we have 3x squared, so that's 5x squared. We have negative 2x, negative 2x, and then we have a negative 4, and a positive 7 is going to give us positive 3. Whatever matches that thing, is that's your answer. And that's answer choice A. Number 2. Now just because, just because now we know that the first 10 questions are quite straightforward and simple does not mean that we, have, we become cocky. If you become cocky and you start making stupid mistakes in the first 10 questions, that is something that you can definitely not afford. Because we are going to make some mistakes obviously in the hard ones. You want to get all the easy ones right and most of the medium ones right. Number two. Number two said, says Mark Mark was given a head start. Question is, head start of, of how much distance? And here, here are the graphs. So here we have the distance, here we have the time, and they give us two graphs, and our job is to figure out how much of a head start Mark was given. Well, one guy starts from here with a distance of zero. His name is Paul. Let's make it a little bit more straight. It's a little curve. And it's a very steep line as you can tell, which means he's going very fast. Which is why the other guy was given a head start because the other guy is slow. Maybe Mark is a child and this guy is an adult. Who knows? Maybe one is elderly and the other one is not. Who knows? So here's the other guy and he goes like that and eventually they catch up. The question is how much of a head start that he was given? At point at, at time zero he starts from here. So this, this is how much of a head start he was given, and this is where we again have to pay attention. It goes by the it goes by the six. It goes by by six. So this is twelve. Then this is another one. This is twenty-four. Then 30, 30 and thirty-six. This is how the graph is marked. You just pay attention, and that's what it is. And he is at the third mark. And see that the third mark, and each mark is is a unit of six six yards. 6 yards, 12 yards, 18 yards. The answer is 18 yards. He was given a head start of 18 yards because this is the third marker. 6, 12 and 18. Number 3. In number 3 we are told that we have a snowfall. We have a snowfall and this is what we are told. 
we are told that snow fell then it stopped for a while then fell again at a faster rate and the question is how do we show in the form of a graph how do we show the total accumulation don't mind, don't mind about my handwriting because I'm just trying to write uh, uh, fast you have the book in front of you so let's take care of it shall we so we can have a snowfall so here is our time and here is where we are going to show the accumulation what happens? it falls it falls but as you read the whole thing we have to keep in mind that later on it is going to fall at a faster pace and that means that segment will have a steeper slope than that guy so don't start out with a steeper slope here so let's start with something flat it falls it's accumulating as you can see the snow is accumulating then it stops which means there is no more accumulation then it begins to fall again but at a faster pace and that's it that's all we are looking for pick one answer choice that matches that pick one answer choice that matches that depiction and you're done that's answer choice A that's answer choice A very very quickly even though nobody is asking us for it what do they depict in answer choice D answer choice D shows something like this that's a constant rate it's a constant rate it never stops it just keeps on going at a constant pace never it doesn't uh, uh, fall slowly and then fast at a different time it does not what does C show? C shows something like this it falls so that you have accumulation then it starts the snow, snow stops falling and then it begins to melt it keeps melting so there is no more snow on the ground eventually it falls to zero there is no accumulation so the snow is falling at a constant pace here then it stops and then it begins to melt I'm not going to put D on the blackboard because D is just the opposite D is for those people who are not paying attention in D they show the opposite scenario where it falls faster first the first segment is steeper then it stops and then it begins to fall slower that's not what we're dealing with we're dealing with just the reverse that was number three in number four we have we are told that we have one time fee of three hundred and fifty dollars plus D dollars each month we pay the total of one thousand and ten dollars we paid for a year the question simply is based on this information what must be the daily or what must be the monthly charge we have to pay a fixed price, a fixed fee, a one-time fee, a one-time charge of 350. After that, we're going to pay D dollars per year. And based on that information, I wrote a check for $1,010 because this represents the payment for a year. What was my monthly charge? Well, there we go. So fixed 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 price of 350. After that, I'm going to pay D dollars per month. I paid for a year, which means I paid for 12 months. So this is the 12 monthly payment plus the fixed charge, initial fixed charge, and that has to equal 1010. All we have to do is solve this simple equation and we are done. Let's solve, we must. So let's subtract 350 from both sides. 350 is going to go away. Here we have 12D equals 1010 minus 350, so that's a 0. 11 minus 5 is 6. 9 minus 3 is 6. So oh, there you go. That makes it very simple. D, D is simply 660 over 12. 660 over 12. Let's do it on the top. Six hundred and sixty over 12 
Let's divide top and bottom by two. So this is going to become six. Oh, tell you what, why don't we why don't we divide top and bottom by six? Instead of dividing your baby step, let's divide top and bottom by six. If we divide twelve by six, we get a two, and we divide six as one six, six as one six, and zero has no six. Makes very simple. 110 divided by 2. Let's divide top and bottom by 2 now and 2 is going to go away and 110 becomes 55 because 55 times 2 is 110. There you go. My monthly charge was $55. Whatever, whatever the hell that I'm buying here. Okay. Number 5. Number 5. There is not much going on in my notes here because I don't know what they're asking for. They're simply asking us to identify which of the which of the following inequality is equivalent to the one that is shown above. And if you look at the answer choices, all they are doing is they're dividing this inequality by three. That's all they are doing. If you divide the entire inequality by three, if you divide the entire inequality by three, you're done. Two, two six x will become two x. This is going to become three y. It's twelve. There you go. That's all they are doing, and that's answer choice B. Just divide the entire inequality by 3. Number 6. On the next page. Number 6 says that we surveyed. 1200 people. 1200 people were surveyed and they were asked one very simple question. They were asked, where do you get your medical information? Where do you get your medical information? And the question is, based on this survey, out of this 1200, how many use either a doctor or Internet. So we went around asking 1200 people where do you get your medical information and we want to find out that out of 1200 people how many said that I get most of my medical information from either from my doctor or I just go on the internet. And here are the results of the survey. So we have doctors, we have internet, we have magazines, we have pharmacies, we have television and we have miscellaneous. 63, 13, 63, 13, this is 63, 9, 6, 2, 7. We're not interested in anything else. This was just a waste of time for us to put on the blackboard. All we were interested in these two. So, 63 plus 13, that's 76. 76%. 76% of 1200 is what we are interested in finding out. Let's find out, shall we? Well, listen, 76% of uh, 1200, I don't know about you, but I'm lazy. I don't know if I ever told you that or not. I'm not going to do 76, I'm just going to do 75, which is 3 quarter. 3 quarter represents 75% of 1200, makes it easier. Let's divide top and bottom by 3, so that becomes 300. 300 times 3 is 900. Now, at this point, I would have stopped. If I were taking the exam myself, I would have stopped at this point. I'm looking for some answer choice. One answer choice, there's slightly more than 900 because they wanted 76%, I got 75%. And that answer choice that is slightly more than 900 is C. But what that C is slightly more than, I really don't care. But just to amuse you, I'm going to finish it up. Okay? So that represents 75%. You understand that? That's three quarters. Three quarters is 75%. You want 76%. Well, one person of 1,200, one person of 1,200 is just 12. Just add 12 to it, that's all. There's no need to cry. Just add another, two, another 1 percent, and that's 12. One person of 1,200 is 12. So it's not 900, 900 is 75 percent. One more person will be 12 more.
Number seven. So here, what is going on here is that this person, who happens to be a very bright person, goes out and takes a survey of 500 people. And the question that is being asked to these people is, should we convert this open field that we have where the kids play in our park, should we convert that into, into a dog park, park for the dogs? And as I said, this bright person goes to survey 500 people and he asked 500 dog owners, he asked 500 dog owners, is that a bright idea? What do you find wrong with this scenario? Do you find something wrong? Of course we find something wrong. This is of course clearly an example of a bias sample. This is an example of a bias sample. This is no different than we came across twice before we came across this situation. We came across Number 26 on page 608. If you turn you if you turn your book, uh, turn uh, open your book and turn to page 608, number 26, you will find the same situation, same exact situation. We also came across on number 23 on page 476. Same thing. Same thing. In one example, he wants to find out. What is the average number of kids a typical family has in his village? And again, this happens to be the same bright person, I think. He goes to the, he goes to the playground to take his survey, to take his quote-unquote random sample. What kind of people are going to go to playground? Of course, people with kids. If you want to find out the average number of kids in, this, in, the, in the town, you have to take a random sample. Random sample means exactly what it says. Do you understand? If you, want to, if you want to do a survey in a town to see if the town should allow the, the local bar to stay longer hours and you want to take a sa random sample of 100 people, it's not a very bright idea to go to the bar and take, start taking a survey. That's not a random sample. Or another example I gave in one, one of the other videos is if you want to find out how often people in your town go to church, how often do they go? Again, it's not a bright idea to stand outside the church on a Sunday morning and start asking people who come out as to how often they go. A random sample has to be random. This is not random, obviously. Number... That was too much, that was too much time for, for nothing at all. Number eight. This is, of those... who chose vanilla, what fraction chose hard fudge? Of those people who chose vanilla in the chart that I'm going to put on the blackboard, what fraction of those people chose hard fudge as their, as their, as their serving or topping, whatever you call it, I don't know what it's called, whatever you put the bloody thing on you on your on your ice cream oh it is cool topping okay so here we go here we have hot fudge and we have car i don't know what car is caramel here's vanilla and here is chocolate there we go so of those people who chose vanilla, of those people who chose vanilla, the people who chose vanilla are these people. This is our pool of people, 13. These are the people who chose vanilla. Of those people who chose vanilla, how many chose hard fudge as their topping? Well, eight of them. The answer simply is eight over 13. Eight out of 13 people chose hard fudge as their topping for those who chose vanilla.
number nine. Here we have 621,000 people. Total area we are told is 992.1 square mile of this town, of which, of which water consists of of which water takes up I want to say 11 11 point3 square miles the question simply is what's the density what's the population density for this town that's all it is so first thing you need to figure out is how much land this town has of course it has a total area of 92 square miles but of which 11 square miles is just water people cannot obviously live on that so the land area the land area is simply 92 minus 11. Forget about this point number point three. Okay, don't fuss. Okay, don't fuss. Uh, don't, 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 don't be, don't be goody two shoe. Okay. I was going to say don't be anal. Don't be goody two shoe. Don't, don't, don't fuss. Just forget about that part. So that's just one. It's eighty one. So it's just six hundred and twenty one thousand over eighty one. That's what it is. Just do it out, shall we? We need the room, so I'm going to erase all of this thing. And this thousand part, I'm going to write it separately. And this is 621. Let's begin, shall we? As you can see, 6 is divided by 3. 6 is divisible by 3, rather, what I meant to say. And 2 plus 1 is 3, which means this is divisible by 3. 8 plus 1 is 9. 9 is divisible by 3. Since the sum, since the sum of the digit is divisible by 3, both of these numbers are divisible by 3. That's where I'm going to begin my story. Let's divide top and bottom by 3. 6 has two threes. 2 has no threes. What happens to that 2? 2 goes and joins to 1. becomes a 21. And 21 has 7 threes. Since we divide the top by 3, we must divide the bottom by 3. 8 has two threes. 2 threes are 6. After we take a 6 from 8, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the 1 to become 21 and 21 has 7 threes. Let's do one more round of 3. 27 has 9 threes. 20 has 6 threes. 6 threes are 18. After we take away 18 from 20, we have a remainder of 2. 2 goes and joins the 7 and becomes 27 and 27 has 9 threes. Let's go one more round. Let's divide by 3. And we have 2 and we have 3. 20, 23 divided by 3. Let's go one more round of 3. We divide 3. This is where we 7, 7 3 is a 21. After we take away 21 from 23, we have a remainder of 2. And since we are dividing by 3, that 2 must be divided by 3. In other words, 23 divided by 3 is 7 2 3rd. 7 and 2 3rd times 1,000. 7 and 2 3rd times 1,000 is 7,000 and 2 3rd of 1,000 is 666. 7,666, 666, something like that. Pick the one answer choice that comes closest to it, and that's answer choice B. You understand where the 667 came from, right? Two thirds, if you write two thirds, it's just 0 0.666 repeating. So have to go, if you have to go to third digit, it's, that's what it is. That times a thousand becomes six. And that's it, that's your answer. Pick the one answer choice that comes closest to it. That was the end of the page. We're going to stop right here because otherwise, I think the video is already way too long. We don't want to make it longer because I don't want risking, I don't want to risk boring the pants off you. It does, does not seem like a decent proposition. I'll see you tomorrow, okay? In the meantime, if you wish to get hold of me, you can reach me at kishwaniprep at icloud.com. Bye now.